welcome to the lecture series under the e sectiona program of vtu karnataka this is professor uma rao bringing you the lecture series on transmission and distribution so in my last session we had discussed the concept of reliability and with respect to reliability we discussed two indices one is the average interruption on the system and the other one is the average interruption per person affected that is cd and kd now we'll move on and see other indices to describe the reliability of the system so the other index is what's called as psi phi system average interruption frequency index that means how frequently the ni is the total number of customers affected for each interruption divided by the total number of customers so in the example we considered we had a 30 minute interruption affecting 400 customers or consumers and a 45 minute interruption affecting 1000 customers and the utility serving totally 50000 customers so psi phi is 400 plus 1000 by 50000 that is 0.028 this means that on a single day the customers had a probability of 0.028 loss of service or 2.8% loss of service the other index is chi phi customer average interruption frequency index so that is that tells you how many times there was an interruption so n not is the number of interruptions so this doesn't consider how many customers were affected just that how many interruptions occurred so there were two interruptions affecting totally 1400 customers so that gives you 0.00142 so this means that the average number of interruptions per customer who was affected is 0.00142 in a day okay so these are some of the reliability indices so now let's just look at under what conditions the distribution systems operate that affect the reliability so the first one is the economic conditions so the efficiency of the distribution system depends on the losses so some cost is incurred to design a system of high efficiency so you have to design in terms of material you choose and in terms of redundancy you provide etc so a system must operate at a loading level where the cost gained in reduction of losses is equal to the cost incurred in improving the efficiency okay so what does this mean to reduce the efficient sorry to increase the efficiency i have to reduce the loss so to reduce the loss i have to take certain measures and that costs money okay now if i improve the efficiency i save some money right so i operate at a point where there is a equilibrium between these two for example to reduce losses i improve the power factor so i put power factor capacitors right so installing a power factor capacitor costs money so this cost must offset whatever gain i get by improving the efficiency otherwise then i'll be spending more money than what i get okay generally the urban distribution systems operate below the economic limit then we have thermal loading that is the limit of the line loading based on thermal limits that means what is the maximum power a distribution line can carry before it gets heated up enough to melt okay so this depends on the type of conductor and the geographical uh, 
location, the ambient temperature, etc. So, we all always operate way below the thermal limit. The lines are operated way below the thermal limit for various reasons. I told you the lines must be capable of carrying much more load than what they do normally in case of faults. So, to take care of this, I need to have lines of higher capacity which would be carrying lesser load in the normal uh, condition. Next, we consider the voltage drop. So, we did a number of problems where you know the voltage drop in different sections. So, the voltage drops from the substation to the consumer premise, you saw there is always some drop under normal operating conditions between the sending end and receiving end. So, this has to be within a limit. Okay. I cannot have too low, volt, too low a voltage at the customer premises. Similarly, we also limit the unbalance in the lines because too much of unbalance will cause what is called as a negative sequence current that is a component of the current phase current which has an opposing phase sequence to the normal current. So, if the normal current sequences are y b, the negative sequence currents have r b y and these cause heavy losses in the equipment. Then what is a fault current capability? So, the switch gear must be able to make and break the fault. So, before it breaks the fault for a short time, the fault current will be flowing. Okay. So, the components, the distribution lines, the switch gear etcetera must be able to bear this current for a very short duration. And in one of the sessions, I told you that modern circuit breakers are equipped with auto reclosure facility. So, this auto reclosure facility can cause excessive stress in the circuit breakers. Though this auto reclosure facility improves the reliability of the system, there is a lot of stress created because of auto reclosure. The breaker may close on a fault because the fault may not have cleared when the breaker recloses. Over voltage. So, the various components must be able to withstand the over voltages due to surges of lightning, faults, etcetera. And then we have a lot of non-linear loads today. You know your electronic converters, rectifiers, inverters, they all draw a lot of harmonic currents. We will see about harmonic currents in the coming session soon. So, these harmonic currents, they cause additional losses in the system and we may have to provide filters to filter them. Another condition in the distribution system is what we call as flicker. So, this has a very rapid variation in the voltage. The variation is within the permitted limits, but it is very rapid. So, it affects the vision. So, I think we are all familiar with it. You know, sometimes the light bulbs flicker and everything starts flickering. So, these are all some of the conditions under which the distribution system operates and of course, we have the frequency I have spoken earlier session also that the frequency must be maintained within the permitted grid code level. And therefore, to determine the reliability of the system a thorough risk analysis has to be carried out in the planning stage. Now, let us move on to the next issue of quality. We saw reliability, let us see what is quality. So, what is power quality and why are we so interested in power quality and what are the recent developments in the power sector that has increased the importance of power quality. I would not say recent, recent means in the past decade. So, you see a typical in a rural sector, you would find a distribution wire going like this okay? and you can see this is also a very, very familiar sight and look at this, you have a bundle all bundled up in the center and wires being pulled 
distributors and service mains being pulled. This is even worse, there is more jumbling here. So, this is how a lot of connections are given in the rural side, typically in the Asian countries, where the density, population density is more. And you are seeing here some of the equipment we see in our everyday lives, LEDs and uh, TVs, variable frequency drives, we call it as VFDs for industry purposes, CFL and different kinds of uh, TVs and adapters power supplies. So, a lot of variety of loads, a variety of loads on the distribution system. So, quite a few products are common everyday products we use. Apart from this you have very, very highly sophisticated industrial loads and today most of the industries are automated. So, you have a lot of you know digital equipment to enable the automation of industries. So, these are all equipment which are very sensitive to deviations in the specifications. So, normally any electrical product the specification you would give is the voltage at which it has to operate, the power it draws, the power factor, these are the and the frequency for which it is designed. So, these are the parameters of interest. The current you can determine from the power. Okay. So, you have the power, the voltage, the frequency and the power factor. So, now any problem manifested either in the voltage or current or frequency deviation that results in failure or miss operation of customer equipment is said to be a power quality problem. Okay. So, what is a power quality problem? Any problem that manifests as a deviation in either voltage, current or frequency resulting in failure or mal operation of the equipment. Failure means equipment fails to operate, mal operation means it does not operate the way it has to operate that is one definition for power quality. Another definition electrical power quality refers to maintaining a near sinusoidal voltage. So, all our voltages are sinusoidal at a bus at rated magnitude and frequency. So, at every bus. So, a 132 kV bus the voltage should be 132 kV, 11 kV bus 11 kV, 230 volts 230 volts. 50 hertz, 50 hertz. So, in addition the energy supply to the customer must be uninterrupted, reliable. This is another definition for power quality. One more definition, it is a set of electrical boundaries that allows a piece of equipment to function in its intended manner without significant loss of performance or life expectancy. This is very important. See when I say my equipment is designed to operate at 230 volts, the power system is a very dynamic system. So, in so many numericals we considered, we saw that the voltage drop, voltage at the receiving end was dependent on the load, right? And the load is continuously changing on the system. So, the load control is not there, the utility does not have control on the road load, the customer has, the customer may feel hot and switch on an AC and then the customer may feel cold and switch off the AC. So, utility does not have control on all this, so the load is dynamically varying. So, it would be absolutely impossible to maintain the parameters at the specified value. So, what we do? A small amount of deviation is permitted wherein the equipment still operates, but there is no significant loss in the performance or life expectancy. 
So, because of this deviation in the parameter, parameter means the voltage magnitude, the frequency, mainly these two. So, even if there is a deviation, the performance of the equipment should not be affected and its life expectancy should not come down. This is a more sensible definition than saying that there should be absolutely no deviation in voltage, frequency, current and it should be purely sinusoidal. We cannot meet those conditions. Okay. So, this condition is as I said more meaningful and it encompasses two important things. One is the performance and another is the life expectancy. So, I set my limits so that these two are not compromised, these two are not compromised. Now, suddenly why did we get interested in power quality? So, some of the reasons we have a lot of you know electronic equipment using chips, IC chips which require very high power quality. Then today almost all the drives that is the motors in the industries they are all power electronically controlled. So, these converters they draw harmonics which has been causing some issues in the grid. So, this is another reason for increased interest in power quality and better informed customers. And today we have larger integrated networks. So, failure of components leads to multiple failures. We have seen so many case studies. And some recent developments in this field, the governments have revised their laws regulating electric utilities with the intent of achieving more cost competitive sources of electric energy. So, they have they have regulations to allow customers to have solar rooftop PV generators, wind farms, large solar farms and so on. So, obviously the quality of the power the way we have described would be affected. And again this leads to what we call a call the distributed generation. We discussed distributed generation in one of the previous sections where the generation is distributed in the distribution sector. So, earlier the generation was separate, but today the consumer has become a prosumer. The consumer can produce electricity using a solar PV installation. Okay. Then we have a benchmark of power quality in one part of the world against the others. So, people will say hey there there is absolutely no interruption, everything is excellent, but here we are suffering. We have 6 hours of power cut because communication is good, communication has become widespread. So, we know what is happening in the rest of the world. So, this is another reason why you know quality has gained momentum and we have now indices to benchmark. Okay. Now, does the utility always have a record of quality disturbances? Sometimes a capacitor switching may disrupt a manufacturing process or there may be some malfunctions in the hardware or software control problems may be there you may not have a record for all this, you may not have a record for all this. Now, you just see here the customer perception, they think about 60 percent of the outages are caused by natural causes and 17 percent due to utility issues and 12 percent due to issues with the customer and neighbors means not with the customer per se, but with people who, other people who are a part of the system and some unknown causes. But the utility thinks that the natural causes are around 66 percent and problem with the customer is 25 percent. So, there is a difference in the perception about of what is affecting the quality today between the utility and the customer. So, which are the industries most vulnerable to power quality issues? 
and is power quality same as voltage quality because we talk of power quality nobody talks of voltage quality but the power is dependent on the load so the utility is only supplying voltage so is it the same is power quality same as voltage quality so this is a very interesting one and it could have improved so we have in terms of reliability what is called as 3 nines that is 99.9 percent .9%. this is okay for homes just see here the interruption per year is 9 hours that is okay not a large amount in one year out of 8760 hours you have interruption for 9 hours then we have 4 nines where the reliability is 99.99 percent .99%. good for factories about 1 hour downtime in a year 1 hour downtime in a year then we have 5 nines 99.999 percent .99 about 5 minutes in a year in a year mind you not in a day in a year and hospitals airports and then we have 6 nines so hardly about 32 seconds banks where the transactions are huge okay they cannot aff afford power disruption and lastly nine nines absolutely for stock markets 30 milliseconds so the power in the stock exchanges has to be of very high quality because today you have online trading a number of people will be bidding for the stocks and there is an algorithm which runs about who gets it what and so they cannot afford a power disruption. So you see now with sophistication in technology quality has become a major issue because equipment cannot take this disruption, equipment cannot take this disruption. Now let us look at some reasons of power quality, I mean the reasons which have shifted the focus or made power quality more important today. Equipment have become sensitive to voltage disturbances as we discussed, okay? because we have a lot of power electronic equipment, digital equipment using microprocessors, microcontrollers and other digital devices. Companies have become more sensitive to loss of production time and electricity is considered a basic right. So interruption of the supply will mean more complaints. So this is by Jane Clemenson from EPRI. EPRI is a power research institute. And not only are equipment sensitive, but today we have equipment which causes disturbances like power quality is disturbed by power electronic equipment, converters, inverters, your rectifiers, your chargers, mobile chargers, lap, laptop chargers, your LEDs. So these equipment themselves cause power quality aberrations. What power quality aberrations? Deviation in the wave shape. So they will introduce harmonics so that the wave is no longer sinusoidal, deviation in the frequency, deviations in the voltage and so on. So since the amount of load fed through power electronic devices increased enormously, I told you all industries have shifted to drives controlled by power electronics. So this equipment, these equipment cause disturbances which has led to increased focus on power quality. So the main issue with electronic equipment is the drawal of non sinusoidal currents they all draw harmonic currents. So this will create a distortion in the voltage and you will get voltages also which are not purely sinusoid. So a single device may not cause too much of a disturbance but you have thousands of them a single mobile charger may not cause too much of a distance but I have thousands and millions of mobile chargers so together they can add up to considerable disturbance in the system.
and the third reason is there is a growing need for standardization of performance so utilities cannot treat somebody as a consumer earlier we used to use the word consumer now they have to be treated as customer a customer is a person who pays for a service and has a right a consumer no no you know earlier what happens okay if the utility gives me supply i take it that's what, that was the attitude of the people but today i say i am paying so i i demand so electricity electricity is now viewed as a product like any other product because it can be measured it can be predicted guaranteed improved so there is a, there is a guarantee attached with like any other product we tell you this is the quality you are going to get and now it is no longer clear who is responsible for reliability because the customers are also adding to the disturbance in the grid and there are a lot of private parties who have entered the system so we have to define this correctly so today the customer can sue the utility if the customer equipment is damaged because of a faulty supply from the utility so these are all reasons why there is a growing need for standardization and defining performance criteria now utilities also face severe competition so we have privatization in the distribution sector privatization in the generation sector so therefore utilities also are conscious and to survive in the competitive market want to deliver a good product so designing a system with a high reliability of supply at a limited co cost is a technical challenge which has appealed to the people in the power industry and they still want to strive to achieve it and lastly we just saw the reliability criteria so there are power utilities where the downtime is hardly a few milliseconds in a year so the market has become very competitive and the quality in general has improved drastically so gone are the days when we had you know hours of loss of power and gone are the days when the tv would burn or you know some fan would start burning because i got low voltage and equipment got damaged so in general the quality of the power is very good and the generations who have started using power now are already used to getting good quality power so they will continue demanding it and it's the onus of the utility to maintain that quality earlier we had a problem with definitions we had problem with measurements so today power quality can be measured because we have good definitions in place so we know what to measure how to measure we have the equipment to measure it and get precisely the numbers we want okay so today again thanks to digital technology and electronics we have very sophisticated equipment which can measure even minor deviations which occur for very short periods and with increased automation actually it's very difficult to quantify the fault let us just say this say assume you have a plastic molding industry okay so the, there is a process by which you know the polymer is say liquefied and then driven to molds and a short interruption for maybe 30 milliseconds or maybe 30 seconds the power is interrupted so what happens this liquid polymer the characteristic is lost the property is lost now the power interruption lasted for 30 seconds fine but to bring it back to bring it back into action it took say about 4 or 5 hours so now would you say that your power interruption affected you for 30 seconds or for 5 hours yeah so i think you're getting my point 
the power interruption per se may be only 30 seconds, but the process that gets affected because of that interruption may last for 4 to 5 hours the disturbance may last. The process may not come back into action quickly. So, these are all some of the issues you know which have to be looked into when we talk of power quality. Now, is power quality same as voltage quality? Yes. So, we know power is the rate of energy delivery and is proportional to the product of voltage and current. So, it would be difficult to define this in a meaningful manner. Okay. So, the, as I told you the utility can only control the voltage, it cannot control the power. The power is determined by the load. The utility has no control on the load currents. Okay. Therefore, when we say good quality power, we mean good quality voltage because what I get from the utility is the voltage. And the current I draw depends on what kind of load I connect to the utility, clear. Therefore, power quality means voltage quality. For a long time, the main concern, concern of consumers was when we spoke of reliability, we meant continuity of service. That is what we meant when we said reliable. So, quality was, was not a part of reliability, but now we want not only reliability quality and in fact quality is got into reliability itself. So, when we define reliability we say it should be available you remember adequate and the equipment should perform the way it has to. So, quality is included in reliability definition nowadays. Okay. So, as I said quality the loss associated with quality is very high. If a line production line trips and it takes several hours to re start it, the interruption may have lasted only for a few seconds or minutes, but the production is stopped for hours because of this interruption. So, very difficult to quantify. Okay. So, you have availability first and then you have reliability, then quality and with all these comes the customer satisfaction, a very nice figure. Okay. So, you see customer satisfaction encompasses everything, quality encompasses reliability also. What is the use of me having quality power if, I, if it is not reliable? If I get quality power for 1 hour in a day, what will I do with it? Right? Vice versa, if I have reliable power 24 hours a day, but it is not of good quality, what will I do with it? So, both are important and we can club both. Okay. So, the most vulnerable industries to this quality issues. They are the process industries, the airline reservations because they are all online, banking sector, the transactions and money involved is huge, semiconductor industry, the way for fabrication technology needs power that is voltage of highest quality, stock markets, healthcare. So, these are all some industries which are very prone to heavy losses because of power interruptions. Loss could be in terms of monetary also in terms of life. For example, healthcare, you can't put a monetary value because life is affected. So, is power quality again same as vol voltage quality? We will just see IEEE uses the word power quality. IEC uses the word electromagnetic compatibility, all mean the same. So, the definition of power quality given by IEEE dictionary is this, power quality is the concept of powering and grounding sensitive equipment in a way that is suitable to the operation of that equipment. So, there they have included grounding also, improper grounding also causes quality issue. IEC define electromagnetic compatibility that 61001.1 all these are standard numbers is the ability of an equipment or system to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment without introducing intolerable electromagnetic disturbances to anything in that environment. You remember when we did the long line model we said 
voltage, current, they are all waves, electromagnetic waves, right. So, makes lot of sense to talk of electromagnetic compatibility. It is called as EMC. Set of parameters defining the properties of the power supply as delivered to the user in normal operating conditions are in terms of continuity of supply and characteristics of voltage that is symmetry that means perfectly sinusoidal frequency rated frequency of the particular country, the magnitude again as per the standards of the country and the waveform sinusoidal. So, voltage quality is concerned with deviations of the voltage from the ideal. What is the ideal voltage? Perfectly sinusoidal of constant frequency and constant magnitude. Current quality is concerned with deviations of the current from the ideal. Again the ideal current should be single frequency, no harmonics. So, since it is a linear system, in a linear system, okay, if I have voltage of a particular frequency, the current also should be of the same frequency. But what happens? My power electronic loads are all non-linear. So, even the voltage is sinusoidal, it will draw non-linear currents, that it will draw non-sinusoidal currents. So, this current quality is purely dependent on the load, the utility has no control over it. They can enforce regulations. Okay. Power quality is the combination of voltage quality and current quality. But you cannot talk of any deviation for power, but power is not a sinusoidal quantity, it is a number. 100 megawatts, 1000 megawatts, 0 0.8 pf. Okay. So, unlike voltage and current, where you put a cap on the frequency, the shape, there is no shape for power. Okay. So, there is nothing like an ideal power, right? There is nothing like an ideal power. So, actually, you cannot define power quality, you can define current quality and voltage quality, it is a misnomer, I would say but it is come and that is how it stayed. So, we do not talk of voltage quality or current quality, we talk of power quality, it means both current and voltage quality. So, quality of supply, it is a technical part of the voltage quality plus a small mechanical part referred to as quality of service, non-technical part, not mechanical sorry, it is a non-technical part. So, what do I mean by that? When I say quality of supply, I not only mean the voltage I get at my premise, but also how friendly the service provider is to me. If I have an issue as a customer, is the utility ready to interact with me and solve my problem? So, that is also now a part of power quality. So, instead of saying power quality, it is you can say quality of the power supply service. So, the power supply service includes both the power supply as well as the service. So, let us say I am getting quality power, but the, my, my meter I, I feel I am being excessively built and my meter is faulty. So, will my utility come immediately and check my meter? So, these are all the things which come into the service quality. So, the IEC says defines EMC electromagnetic compatibility as we already defined it. The ability of a device or equipment or system to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment without introducing intolerable disturbances to anything in that environment. There are two things here, very beautifully captured. The first is the equipment should behave normally in the environment, that means the environment should not affect the equipment. So, equipment must be immune to deviations or in other words, the deviations should be defined in such a way that the difference in the performance of the equipment is insignificant. There is a second aspect to this definition which says it should not introduce intolerable disturbances into the system, that is called as emission. So, the equipment should not emit electromagnetic disturbances into the grid. 
So this definition beautifully captures both aspects. Now the voltage quality involves the performance of power system towards the load because voltage I get from the utility. Current quality involves behavior of the load on the grid, got it? So the utility is very good, it is giving me voltage at standard frequency, standard magnitude, everything. But my load is bad, I have a heavy power electronic converter which is drawing harmonics, injecting harmonics to the grid. So, who is the culprit? The culprit is my load, not the utility. Okay? So, voltage quality is determined by the utility and current quality is determined by the customer or the customer's load actually. The power system can only control the quality of the voltage, it has no control on the quality of the current. Therefore, the standards of power quality are entirely devoted to maintaining supply voltage, the voltage quality. That is why we say power quality is equal to voltage quality. So now let us see some of the power quality problems. The first is transients. You know transient. Transient means very short, for a short duration. It can be impulsive or oscillatory. Impulsive, the typical example is lightning. When a lightning strikes, it causes a huge surge and then dies. Oscillatory is what would be caused by switching on a capacitor. So, you know, if I switch on a capacitor, what happens? I as it is have R and L in the line, so I get an RLC circuit. So, you know, you know in an RLC circuit under, sun con under certain conditions, you can have sustained oscillations. So, that is called as oscillatory transient. The second type of disturbance is load long duration voltage disturbance. It lasts for a longer time, the voltage disturbance. So, there you have over voltage, under voltage and interruption. The names only tell you what it is. Under voltage means less than specified, over voltage means more than specified. Sustained interruption means loss of power for a significant time. Then we have short duration voltage variations. In this I have sag, sag means reduced, reduced voltage for a short duration. Swell, swell means go up, increased voltage for a short duration and a short interruption, interruption for 30 seconds or something. So a sag which lasts for a longer time is an under voltage. A swell which lasts for a longer time is an over voltage. Then we have voltage imbalance. So, all the three phases are not balanced. Then we have waveform distortion. Distortion means it is no longer sinusoidal. No longer sinusoidal. So, what happens? I have harmonics. I have harmonics. So, harmonics are multiples of the lowest frequency which we call as the fundamental frequency. So, our fundamental frequency in India is 50 hertz because all our equipment, supply, everything is rated for 50 hertz. So, multiple of 50 hertz is said to be the harmonic in power system. And we have interharmonics. Interharmonics are non-integer multiples of fundamental. For example, 75 hertz. 75 hertz is one and a half times 50. So, it is an interharmonic, it is not an integer. 100 hertz is a harmonic because it is two, two times. Then we have DC offset. So, the DC voltage of a pure sinusoid is 0 because the positive half and negative half are equal. So, the DC offset is 0. So, now I have a DC offset. So, either the positive increases or the negative increases. That is also a power quality problem. Waveform is distorted. Then we have notching, notching or sharp spikes. So, these spikes are introduced whenever we switch on electronic switches, IGBTs, MOSFETs and some noise, random noise. So, all these disturbances come under waveform distortion. Then we have voltage fluctuation, flicker. 
it's not a sag, it's not a swell, it's within the limit, but it's very fast, rapid variation. Very typical when you operate welding machines. So, you sit near a welding machine or you observe the lights in a workshop where welding machines are being used, you will see all the lights will be flickering. So, that is a voltage fluctuation. Then we have power frequency variation which is on a larger geographical area, more widespread. So, that is mostly that is due to supply demand imbalance, supply demand imbalance. But all the rest except the power frequency variation, all these are caused by loads. All these are caused by loads. So, that is why we see you see there are so many problems on which utility does not have control because all these problems are caused by the load, right. Now, let us see whether we can formally define some of them. Transients, transient is that part of the change in a variable which disappears when it makes a transition from one steady state to another. These include impulsive transients and oscillatory transients. So, impulsive transient is a sudden non power frequency change typically caused by lightning. Lightning is one of the major reasons for impulsive transients and it will have a sharp rise and decay go up and down. So, the rate of change of current would be very high in case of a lightning and an oscillatory transient is a sudden non power frequency change in steady state condition of either voltage or current of both and it could be either of positive polarity or negative polarity. So, the instantaneous value changes rapidly. So, typical causes for this are opening and closing of circuit breakers on energized lines. Energized lines means lines carrying load, current, current is flowing through the line. So, the breaker opens, so in, it interrupts a fault current or it closes on a fault. Capacitor bank switching, reclosing of, cap, of uh, breakers, tap changing transformers. So, transformers have taps and these are changed for operational purposes in the power system. So, while changing from one tap to other we can have oscillatory transients. So, the frequency of oscillations can range anything between 5 to 500 hertz and the loose connections can cause arcing which can again give rise to oscillations transient. So, you just see here if there is a lightning strike you see here this see this, this is an impulsive transient, a sudden rise, sudden change. So, this is in R phase, this is in Y phase and this is in B phase. So, the voltage you can see here the voltage suddenly shoots up to 1.2, 1.26, 1.6. 1 so, here it is 1 per unit, 1 per unit but then it changes rapidly that is a impulsive transient. And you can see when you switch on a computer monitor ok. So, you just see here this, this is an impulsive transient. The voltage look at the voltage, voltage is sinusoidal no problem with the supply ok. So, the quality of the voltage is good, but what is bad current quality look at this the current as soon as you switch on the monitor that is the current it draws a transient. And this is a oscillatory transient when you switch on a capacitor. So, can you see here these oscillations? This is the, like this high frequency oscillations which are damped. This is the lo load current and the load voltage, the load is a capacitive load. So, oscillatory transients of low frequency will have less than 5 kilohertz and typically last for about um, 50 to 100 milliseconds 
and voltage magnitude can go up to 4 per unit which is pretty high. Then you can have oscillations up to 500 kilohertz, they are called as mid frequency oscillations and lasts for about 20 microseconds and then you have high frequency up to 5 megahertz, 5 microseconds and the magnitude is 0 0.4 per unit. So, let us look at some more power quality issues in the next session. Thank you.